Happy Tuesday, guys. So today's home workout, uh, we're gonna hit some classic benchmark uh, CrossFit workouts, which is Diane and Annie. The way this workout is structured is that you have 10 minutes to finish the 21-59 of deadlifts and stand push-ups. Then we're gonna rest five minutes, so from 10 to 15 minutes, we're gonna rest, and then at the 15 minute mark, we're gonna start another for time, 10 minute time cap of 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, of double unders and sit-ups. So, uh, the first part guys, that benchmark workout is a really good indicator of your strength, um, also your endurance with those move movements, especially uh, your posterior chain, so your back, seeing how strong you are and how long it can last um, at that intensity, and then really work on that upper body endurance and strength there with uh, in, the, in that workout there. So 21.15.9 here, um, if you don't have weights available to you for that deadlift, see if you can find yourself some kind of uh, sandbag or anything a little bit heavier that can help mimic that deadlift um, for you in that workout. Then the handstand push-ups, guys, you can go against the wall or you can do your dive bomber handstand push-ups or even go back to regular push-ups. That's also really uh, good progression for this. Once you finish that, guys, um, that 10 to 15 minute mark of resting, then we have that 50, 40, 30, 20, 10 of the double unders and sit-ups, which is also known as Annie. This one is really just testing that aerobic threshold. So how hard, how fast can you go and stay consistent all the way throughout? So the 50s may be a little slower and then you're gonna get a little bit more speed on the 40s and 30s and then really sprinting off on the 20s and 10s. The hardest part I would say of the workout is the sit-ups. Try to find that pace where you can consistently move throughout those sit-ups, guys. So those 30, those 40s and 30s are gonna be hard. Um, really try to push past that so you can really get to the end and finish off the 20 of those 10s. The last part, guys, once you finish that workout, we got an alternating Tabata for um, the afterburner. If you have any abs left, uh, you guys can go for those leg lifts over an object and those hollow rocks. Um, again, you don't have to do as many reps as possible. You can also use this as time to just work on your technique on it. Hope you guys enjoy the workout and the afterburner. We'll see you guys next for the warm up. Okay, guys, for today's warm up, we are doing two rounds of 50 running skips. If you don't have a skipping rope, you can just jog on the spot for 50 steps. Uh, or if you want, you can do 25 jumping jacks. After you're done that, you're gonna go for five single-legged deadlifts on one side and then five on the other. For the single-legged deadlift, uh, the goal here is to just extend that back leg so you can feel your glute squeeze, you can squeeze your butt, and then you're just gonna lean forward, trying to raise the heel up as the shoulders come down. So I'm trying to keep my body in a nice lever position, so I don't wanna bend my back knee or keep my leg low. I wanna try to move as a lever all the way down and then all the way back up again. This will be a balance test. If you're a little wobbly, kind of fall out of it, that's totally fine. That's a part of what we're working on. So if you kind of fall out of it, just recatch yourself, get your balance, and then get on to that next rep. Once you're done that, you're gonna go for 50 more running skips. Once you're done that, you're gonna get into some bent over rows. So five on one side, five on the other. So with that object in your hand, we're just gonna fold forward. Notice how my back is staying flat, head and neck are neutral. And I'm gonna think about leading back with my elbow and then up, and I'm gonna squeeze that muscle in between that shoulder blade until I'm done five reps on one side, and then I'm gonna switch to the other. Notice that my elbow is staying nice and close to my body. I'm not looking forward and putting stress on my neck. I'm just trying to keep that spine lengthened. So you're gonna do two rounds of that. Once you're done that, you're gonna go for two more rounds. The first movement we're gonna go over is the staggered push-up. So normally in a push-up, your hands are about slightly outside the shoulder width. For this one, we're gonna keep our hands in the same spot, but we're gonna go up and out a little bit with one hand, down and back a little bit with the opposite hand. So we're still thinking about keeping that perfect plank position, and then we're just gonna move one hand forward and out, one hand back and out, and same rules apply in that push-up. If you guys need to go off your knees, you totally can do that as well. 
Once you're done five one way, you're going to bring the other hand up, opposite hand down, core nice and tight, all the way down, all the way up again. Play around with it as you go here, guys. You can get your hands a little bit further and wider apart as you go. Uh, make it a little more challenging. It's supposed to feel a little bit awkward um, as you go. So just work with the distancing of your hands. Once you're done five one way, five the other way, you're gonna go for 25 double unders. If you don't have a skipping rope, you can do the double tap offs. Or if you want to, you can still go for those 25 jumping jacks. Once you're done those, we are now going into a staggered squat. So normally in our squat position, feet are slightly outside the width of the hips. Obviously, normally the feet would be in line. For this one, my one foot's going to come forward and slightly out. The other one's going to go back and slightly out. And we're just going to come down into that squat as we would five times on one side. And then we're going to go back to neutral, reset our body, switch to the other side. And we're going to go back into that staggered squat on the other side. Enjoy the warm-up, guys. It's two rounds of both of those. We'll see you next in the workout. A single arm deadlift, we like to place that item in between the feet. So your deadlift width is gonna be about where you squat. You can go a little bit wider if you wanna get into that sumo stance, that's totally fine as well. And what I want you guys to think about here is we're gonna think about that hip hinge. So I'm gonna think about pushing that hip back and then drawing my hips down after that. You can see my shin is still perpendicular to the ground. So the difference if I was squatting is my shin would be going a little bit forward. I actually want to push that hip back a little bit, get my hip up in the air a little bit. And then I'm going to hold on to my object. Pushing with the legs, opening with that hip, we're going to push that hip back and then lower the object again with those legs. I want you guys to squeeze your butt at the top, make sure that abs are tight. Sometimes when we squeeze our butt, we tend to overarch. Let's make sure we don't do that. Also notice how my head and neck stay nice and neutral. So when I'm at the bottom of that deadlift, I'm not looking straight, I'm not looking down, but I'm kind of looking just maybe a couple feet out in front of me. I want the top of my head to my tailbone to stay in a nice and straight line. If you guys have the mobility and you find it easier or a different type of challenge perhaps to stick to your normal deadlift position, so feet under that hip, and we're just going to keep that dumbbell or kettlebell outside the stance, it makes it a little bit trickier, but it might be a good challenge for you today to do that as long as you keep that back nice and flat, that's the most important part. So, uh, for the strict handstand push-ups again, you can have that second progression just in case um, that first progression you just lose your strength or like halfway through you're not able to do the rep. Always have that second backup in case just to keep the workout going. So for that guys, um, we're going to talk about that dive bomber. So we're going to use that dive bomber as a progression and then we're going to go into that strict handstand push-up as the next progression above that. So with that dive bomber guys, um, if you go nice and wide with your feet, this you should use some kind of ab mat or some kind of mat to get your head down to the ground, at least when you make contact with it. Um, hands are going to be in about push-up width, and they're going to be close to the feet. From here, we're going to think about leaning forward so that we're on those toes and getting over top of those wrists. And then from there, we're going to be dropping the head down right in front of our hands. You notice that my hands are behind my head and they're not in line. So I want them back here. Then I'm going to press my head straight through the window to finish that rep. So that's key guys, really trying to get our head in front of our hands when we're doing that strict handstand push-up. Whether it be with that dive bomber or even if you get your feet on a box and do it elevated, make sure that head is going in front of the hands so we can really use that back to drive it up and not use the front of the delts and put too much pressure on the shoulder there. So you guys can do those or you can do your strict handstand push-ups against the wall. Same things apply. Get those elbows in, get that head in front of the hands, stay in a nice tight body position there. For those double unders, we have them. Uh, let's work on those double unders today. 
If you're at that 30 range, for example, see if you can break him up into sets of 20. Um, or if you want to try it, seeing if you can do bigger sets today, this is a uh, great day to try and start, or a great workout to start doing that. If you don't have double unders, let's go single skips, or we can go for some running skips here, guys. Um, also, you can use that previous option from before, which is the double tap pop. So, you're going to keep the feet together, you're going to jump up, double tap your sides for a 60 reps total. Last movement, sit ups. Again, if you guys have an app mat, great to use one, or if you want to roll up a sweater or a t shirt to use uh, as um, an object underneath your lower lumbar, this will allow you to open up that range of motion a little bit more in your sit up. So again, with those sit-ups, guys, what I want to see, all the way back, chest, uh, where the shoulders touch the floor, hands touch the floor, away, up. Remember those shoulders should at least make it to the hip crease. So if you imagine a hip line with that hip crease going straight up, they should be in the same line as that shoulder on the way up. I don't want you guys to be back here finishing your sit-up. I want you 